My own mother was tortured here in her home. Why? Because they asked where her son was. I put a shawl over my head and was quietly taken over to see his body just before we buried him. There's only me and my daughters now. We really miss having a head of the family. Many say, yes, it was good with the Algerians. This is not true. We spent time with them, but we didn't really mix. We're in Tamazit, in northern Kabylia. This region was the center of resistance to French colonial rule during what the French called the events in Algeria. Fifty years on, we're giving a voice to the Algerians who survived the war. Rabah Adbi was only 19 years old in 1962. His brother, an officer in the National Liberation Army, or NLA, died during the Troubles, leaving his wife and children behind. The French, them, they committed murder. They disemboweled pregnant women. They made bets. Soldiers made bets whether a woman was pregnant with a boy or a girl. Well, to win the bets, they ripped the woman open with bayonets to see if it was a boy or a girl. So you see the atrocities committed by the French army. My little niece, whose father was in the resistance, was in a room over there. The French army came in and started kicking her. I remember it very well. A soldier kicked the baby and she died later. I think it must have caused some bleeding somewhere. He kicked her with his combat boots, a baby, just a year and a half old. All because her dad was in the resistance. Ores and Kabylia were resistance strongholds surrounding the Djurdjura mountains. This bastion of the revolution was a recruitment base for the NLA. It's also where Abana Ramdane, one of the movement's great leaders, recruited the bulk of his fighters. Saida is a widow of and daughter to Algerian martyrs. Her mother too was killed when she tried to give her brother a gun she had found in the woods. She did manage to give it to him, but when she got back to the village, the French soldiers shot her because they recognized her and they knew she'd recovered the gun. For this, she was shot 24 times. You and your family have suffered so many losses because of the war. Ten people in your family were killed. Are you angry at France and at the French soldiers? We've endured so much. How can you forget that? Fourteen men in my family were killed, including four uncles on the paternal side. And also my stepmother and my own mother. How can we not be angry with France? We forgive them, but the wound is still there, embedded in our hearts. In the village square, we meet Boussad, who suggests we meet his stepmother, Zahra. She became a widow at just 21. Her story is like those of thousands of other women in the region. Only a few months ago, she was finally given the right to bury her husband's body with dignity. We've lost count of how many people were killed here. My husband and his companions were buried up there in the woods. We collected their bones two or three months ago so we could finally bury them properly. The whole village went to retrieve their remains. They were placed in coffins. Then the Iman recited a prayer in their memory. And then we were able to collect a few moments just before they were buried for good. They were found as they lay, still wearing their shoes. And the only way I could identify my husband was by his shoes. Do Algeria's young people know that on July the 5th their country will have been independent for 50 years? For many of them, 1962 is a date with special significance reserved for the old.
هذا بزواوي بل كيف الكاشي الحومة والغاشي لي سي بي ار ولي سي ام جي تعمارو تنمخ اتاك في كارت اسكالي We swallow things, but the truth, the real story, nobody knows. It's virtually guaranteed that the story we're told isn't the history we're taught at school. We're talking about the real story. Today, with the internet, you can find sites that tell you this and another that tells you that. It's hard to know what to believe. And you know about the war in Algeria. We know about the French uh, saying we were indigenous, even though this wasn't the case, and we know they said we were an underclass, even though we were very educated. And it's not surprising there is so little interest when Algeria's history, its national liberation, is allotted just a few pages in the history books. Intellectual Mohamed Lakdar Mauga blames the Algerian government for creating an apathetic youth. Most of the people who got into power at that time only had basic secondary school education. They were all adventurers, they'd fought with France during World War II, and some will have fought in Vietnam. But because of the aftermath of World War II and the promises that had been made by General de Gaulle had not been kept. This was supposed to emancipate society and support its independence. And people said, well, he lied to us. So that's it. Felix Colosi now lives on a generous pension in a quiet suburb. But his life wasn't always so calm. The one-time communist activist also witnessed the brutality of the war, losing his best friend to the guillotine. They beheaded people, including people who hadn't done anything, because they needed a culprit. Me, I saw in one prison 38 people get beheaded. And you know who the executioner was? In land where all the condemned were sent, it was like a concentration camp. And the executioner was a former criminal who killed an entire family because he'd been refused the daughter's hand in marriage. And he was given a pardon by the warden of the prison, so he could torture the prisoners. Abderrahman Bougamal was 20 in 1962. He's frustrated with what an independent Algeria has achieved. He feels this dark period of history is yet to reveal all its secrets. We have absolutely nothing at all. Today's colonization is worse than the French's set up. I'm sad to say it. I'm sad because it's my brothers who've done this. They've got to a certain stage where instead of imposing a Molière, they've imposed Gamel Abdel Nasser on us, whose shadow still hangs over Algeria. It'll be very difficult to get away from that. Ahmed Ben Bella, founder and first president of the National Liberation Front, took his last breath, age 95, a few months short of the July the 5th celebrations. His final resting place in Martyrs Square ensures this national hero a permanent place at the forefront of Algerian independence. <laughs>